is the Emergency Medical Minute. Good morning. Happy Monday. Um, okay, so pain. We talk about pain a lot. We all like to talk about pain. So um, <clears throat> I think that all of us are using a lot of you know novel approaches to pain management in the ED, but um, I listened to kind of a compelling podcast about use of Haldol for pain. So I think we, you know, tend to use it for headaches um, and it's sort of down the line in the algorithm a little bit. And uh, we use it for chronic pain for other things like gastroparesis and cyclic vomiting and those sorts of things. Um, so this this podcast really talked a little bit more about the fact that opiates cause pa patients to be hyperalgesic. So they basically potentiate the pain. So you give opiates, the, the pain is ultimately potentiated, and then you give more opiates and your therapeutic window kind of decreases. So really, you know, any chronic pain patient that's on opiates, we really have to look at a different approach. And so um, his, his uh, practice is that he uses a lot of Haldol. So we have, uh, his, his uh, study was also predicated on some studies back in the 70s at the VA uh, when we actually had droperidol. But um, using Haldol kind of as a cogener for that, they uh, have done several studies, most of which revolve around the abdominal pain syndromes. But his practice is that he uses Haldol 5 to 10 milligrams, uh, 5 milligrams IV, 10 milligrams IM for his chronic pain patients, uh, repeats it times one and monitors them if they have any sort of risk for QTC prolongation, if they have comorbidities or if they have uh, other drugs that QT prolong that are prone to QT prolongation. Um, and he's had really excellent effects with that. So it does obviously sedate people. So the chronic problems that we see with Haldol are QTC prolongation um, and then also dystonic reactions. So there's not really good data for uh, sort of brief use of Haldol. Long-term Haldol can cause 20 to 30% of patients to develop extrapyramidal symptoms because they do it's a dopamine blocker. So you basically get these Parkinsonian symptoms as a result of it. So, um, you know, really one of the things that uh, in emergency medicine we really need to look at is what is our actual side effect profile? Do people really have problems with QTC prolongation and, and actually rhythm disturbances? It's sort of one of those the theoretical considerations that we don't really um, see very much. We also have these fancy monitors that, that watch for prolonged QTC. Um, so it's really kind of a, a safer drug to use. So he advocates using that. The other thing that he does... Um, that's kind of interesting is he uses it to decrease the side effects, the dysphoric side effects of ketamine administration subsequently. So his regimen is if the Haldol doesn't work adequately well, then he uses ketamine in a little bit higher doses than we do. We obviously have our preset at 0.2. Um, the therapeutic range is 0.1 to 0.3, and he's using more like doses of 0.4 to 0.5 for ketamine, so kind of closer to the dissociative side effect dosing. Um, but anyway, that was his regimen. Kind of interesting. I think that, you know, a lot of what we're doing sort of organically is this, um, but having some more information and, and then looking at some of the studies with corollaries, like, again, the HUG study for gastroparesis uh, and use of Haldol um, may kind of expand our use of Haldol for more chronic pain. Chronic pain. Yeah, so this is more geared. His, his talk was specifically about the opioid-dependent patient um, with chronic pain, but you know, really trying to look at different ways to manage that that are completely non-opiate because, you know, you've got definitely a subset of patients that are on these chronic pain meds prescribed by their primary care provider or their pain management doc saying this is a way to manage your pain, but really they're managing pain while they're also increasing their pain sensitivities. He actually, sorry, not to just go on and on, but they, um, they referenced kind of an interesting study. So they had patients who were uh, being weaned from their opiates and they were exposed to pain stimulus and the higher opiate dose patients who were on higher opiate doses had much more response to pain than did patients on lower opiate dose doses. So, you know, again, you're just potentiating pain by giving the opiates as well. I mean, multiple studies have proven that. So, again, you know, opiates aren't really helping. And even in short-term cases, so they've done studies with patients with orthopedic injuries and their pain perception on short-term opiates even increases. So, pretty interesting stuff. Thank you. Emergency Medical Minute is and always will be about free medical education. Medicine's most prolific podcast is successful because of our supporters, donors, and of course, our listeners. 
Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you support spreading free medical education, please donate at our website, emergencymedicalminute.com. As always, keep listening.